Okay, hi everybody. I think we're ready to go. Um, to uh, Chuck, can you unmute yourself? Done. Done. Hey, I hear you. Excellent. So, hi everybody. Uh, welcome to this week's learning space. Uh, my name is Georgia Bracy, and as you can see, uh, I am by myself today. I am doing this solo. Um, my co-host Nicole, who is usually uh, holding the reins here is um, off doing so many things I can't even keep track of what she's doing. She is just incredibly busy right now with conferences and other travels so she will be back with me next week but uh, we have a great guest and a lot of a really fun activity for you today on Learning Space. Uh, with me is Chuck Buter. And Chuck, I'm going to let you say hello in just a minute but I want to remind everybody really quickly that of course we have the Q&A app um, from Google Plus, uh, which is the place to put your questions. So we love to take questions. We love to hear from you during our broadcast here. So please do that. Please um, give us a few questions. Say hello. But if you want to have any sort of background discussion, um, please go over to our Google event page. And I see, hi Nancy. Thank you. Nancy has put a quick reminder to do that for everybody. So it's easier for us to keep track of questions in the Q&A app and then discussion can happen over on the event page. So um, so thanks everybody and hello. Uh, I see we've got Tatiana, hello and thanks for joining. So um, Chuck, I'm going to have you start out um, just by telling us a little bit about yourself and then we can start in on your project. So go ahead Chuck. All right. Uh, thanks for the invitation George. I appreciate being sure. here. Um, I'm an amateur astronomer and I got into the planetarium community uh, when I used to work on, on tugboats and charter boats and things like that, and the Great Lakes would freeze over, so in the wintertime I would uh, try to get employment at a place like the Adler Planetarium. And so I got turned on to astronomy that way, and through Adler uh, I got hooked into the Great Lakes Planetarium Association, and my interest has blossomed ever since then. And today we're going to be talking about paper plate education, and in particular the astronomy components of it. And that was developed by the Great Lakes Planetarium Association. And I've kind of picked up the torch and carried it uh, since then. Great. And when did this start? How long ago? Uh, it was in the early 1990s. So this is kind of digging into the archives for me. I haven't <laughs> done a lot of paper plate stuff in a while. Um, currently, I'm working on uh, my other projects that you can see at uh, nightwise.org. But the um, paper plate astronomy itself began when uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Wayne James, who's a planetarian, was going to a picnic event, you know, astronomy event, and he's an itinerant astronomer, and it got cloudy on him, and who hasn't had that happen to him? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's a picnic. So in the back of his car for the picnic, he's got all the paper products for this picnic, and so he comes up with, you know, 15 or 20 different astronomy activities that he can do on a paper plate. And once he shared those at a, at a conference, um, I saw that and I thought this is just way too cool and kind of took it and ran with it. That's amazing. Yeah, um, it just seems like the weather is always something you you can't be too sure of, so it's good to have something sort of in your you know toolkit to pull out and uh, and wow, really innovative and resourceful to just use what you have at hand, right? Yeah, and it's cheap. I mean, you can get yeah. a paper plate, a few cents for a paper plate. And, you know, one of the things I like about the paper plate is that it's really non-threatening. So, you know, you're working with kids and things like that, and, you know, a piece of paper all of a sudden starts to get like school. <laughs> and uh, this isn't school. This is Some of the activities are activities that you're going to be doing, you know, science unto itself, you know, which science starts with observing. And there will be some plate activities that you'll be doing some observing with. But a lot of it is activities to supplement uh, lesson plans that you're already doing. Yeah, and you know what, not just students, I bet. It's also, it's non-threatening to teachers and to even parents, I bet, who would like to do something like this at home. And, you know, you've got paper plates and you can have fun with it. You don't have to worry about breaking it or ruining it. You can just grab a bunch and kind of go at it. Yeah, as long as you don't get into some of the real technical plates where you get to be intimidated like how did they do that I don't remember so you can always come back to this and uh, check it out here we've also uh, so what we did was we put together a website and uh, it's at paper plate education is the name of it okay the URL it's easier just to Google paper plate 
education or paper, sure. plate, paper plate singular, and it comes up surprisingly high on a Google return. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it preceded actually Google when we made this um, this website, and the kind folks at DePaul University in Chicago gave us server space and introduced me to uh, Microsoft front page, talking about going way back, and we put together a lot of these activities on this website. A little nostalgia. Um, I can I can share that if you want me to right now, or do you want to go ahead and sure? I mean, and the, uh, the URL you just do it too. Um, audibly is analyzer.depaul.edu slash paperplate. There it is. Right, you see it. All right. Yes, now, I know. It kind of looks a little retro, doesn't it? Well, it's quite retro, as a matter of fact. Um, okay. That was that was 1990s software, and <laughs> it's so old I can no longer update it right now. So I've recently spoken with them to see how we can update it. You can see the last update was in anticipation of the transit of Venus in 2012. So we're a little bit behind okay. on the updating. But the um, the main link there, if you click that activities link, this is yeah the, the front page here gives you a little introduction. You'll see there's videos also. Um, okay, that's a good great. one to look at. Let me see if I can okay get the activities link. And uh, so here's a, a bunch of activities um, with the name, a link to the activity, a brief description, and over on the far right it'll tell you if there's a little video component. I realize the video was also from the Wayback era, so it's not too slick. This was done in my in a bedroom closet. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, it works. And you know, sometimes the simpler and like you say, the less intimidating is, is, can be very good. So good. got some pictures here, very easy to find the activities and use. So you can't complain about that. Yeah, the key to is is not to think that you have to do it this way. The key is that here are some ideas, take it and run. You know, it, it's it's teaching at its best in that you take somebody else's idea that becomes, you know, a kernel of something greater and adapt it for your own purposes, your own uses. I don't care how you use it for educational purposes. Yeah. So you, yeah, exactly. And you know, teachers are great at doing that and you know, parents are too, of course. They have to do that all the time. But, um, as a, teachers love to, you know, no matter how great the activity is, it seems that you get as a teacher, you know, your students or your classroom environment is a little bit different and so you're always kind of tweaking things and and experimenting with it and you know sometimes you come up with um, you know surprisingly new and fun things and it's just it's part of the fun of teaching and it should be part of the fun you know as whatever adult you are if you're a parent or a scout leader you know you could use these with scouts of course too and all kinds of groups and you know that's part of the fun you know kind of tweaking it coming up with something a little different yeah so we'll get into a paper place in just a second but here's some examples of um, what some others have done as far as modifying paper plates. So it doesn't have to be done on a paper plate, but maybe you get an idea from a plate or paper plate that you can then modify into you know, a, a, a typical classroom handout type yeah, thing. Yeah, and so you've got basically, of course, you know, paper plate being circular, mm -hmm. and then uh, that leads to all kinds of good you know, astronomy ideas. And it looked like you had a bunch of things with uh, those little... Oh, what do you call them? Brads, those brass brads, yes, yes. You, to allow you to twirl things around a little bit, and uh, so that might be one other little small piece of equipment you might need for these activities. And of course, maybe a pair of scissors, some markers, crayons, anything you would like to get artistic with. All right, and then um, somehow the are we still there? Okay, uh, so right. here. Here are some of the uh, activities that we could possibly look at today. And um, we'll kind of give you like an overview of several of them. Great. And if any of our viewers uh, would like to go into any in particular, we can. So I got a bunch of them lined up here behind me to introduce you to some of these activities. All right, go ahead, looks good. Um, and if we, start, if we start with something simple, I mean, some of it's very simple. And if I grab these first few, it's more, you know, kind of arts and craftsy, but you never know what's going to, um, what will instigate dialogue about a topic in astronomy. One of the simple things we did is because kids like masks, I got a stamp and made out just a, a stamp of um, a moon face. And what the kids will do then is we just, so we go and stamp up a bunch of paper plates. And actually, 
often on these activities, you're better off getting the cheap, non-waxed paper plates. Get the cheapest recycled paper plates you can. Don't spend any money, you know, good money on the plates because the waxed ones you can't write and color on as easily. So then the kids will just go and cut out the eyes <laughs> and and color the uh, color the face in. And once they've got you know the face colored in to their liking, I just go and put a rubber band on the back. Ah, so did you staple staple that on the back? Or That's all it is. Yes. Band? Yeah, just staple it on and <laughs> staple. So. Fabulous. And did, did you draw that uh, face <laughs> on the front, or was that something you? I have a friend who's an artist who did that face for us. Yeah, it looks like the faces you see on suns all the time at at uh, Mexican restaurants. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also I wanted one know, of those to hang up in my house. Uh, this, the this particular one we used. Um, oh, what do they call those? Uh, not neon colors, but uh, glow in the dark crayons. And so when you when you put that one on and go in a black light, it's really fun. The kids run around and yeah, first of all, they can't see each other well because of the openings in the eyes, and plus it's dark out, so they all run into each other. Blah blah blah. <laughs> okay, another another simple one is just uh, you know day and night. Again, this is really simple. Hang in there if you're a higher education teacher. We'll get into some technical dials and how to find the planets and Feynman's diagrams and things like that if you really want to get technical. But this is just going to be a simple. You'll see this kind of shape often, and this is your your viewing window. Uh, this is going to be a two-sided horizon, one's day and one's night. And you're merely going to affix, so there's the base, and you're merely going to affix this to it, and you can rotate through day and night. But I have to go the correct way here so that the sun comes up. Okay. And then, you know, this shows the sun up in the daytime, but if we have, for example, you know, uh, I don't have the, the brad in there, as you were mentioning, in the center to hold it together. But you'll notice you can also have the sun and the moon up at the same time in the day. And you don't have to go and have a full moon as we've got depicted on this one uh, because you don't want to reinforce the idea just the moon is seen up only at night. You could put the moon up on the, on the daytime scene. So that's just a simple uh, day and night one. Did you um, talk about um, how the, the sky, the motions of the sky, right, how that... How that works, and actually, I've run into a lot of you know younger kids, and and honestly, sometimes older and adults too, that they just haven't paid a lot of attention to the sky even during the day. They're you know out doing their thing, and and sure, we know the sun you know rises and sets, but you know yeah, is the moon sometimes out during the day? Um, a lot of people would say no, and you know how what are those motions happening in the sky? This is a great way to just model that very simple idea. Well, too often, you know, you talk about the day, um, you know, too often we're handed something like this. Somebody will go and say, here, here's a planisphere, okay? A planisphere. A mm -hmm. planisphere is a, when you take the sphere of stars and reduce it down to a plane, and then you've got the you know, star wheel or star dial or whatever you want to call it. So... You know, sometimes we go and have kids make them, and you know, our idea of making them is, you know, giving the pieces and cutting them out mm -hmm. and putting it together. But in paper plate astronomy, what we'll do is we'll, I mean, we'll really make one. So the way to, to make one, I'm going to show you the end product first. For example, here's what we're going to be striving for. This might have a little reflection in it. But all we're doing is we're taking a plate that's got the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia and a few stars of the Little Dipper on it. Mm -hmm. And then we have a little horizon here in the foreground. And it shows you how, it's a big, so you don't get that reflection there. It shows you how that the, the uh, stars will rotate. And you can see, oh, there are the Big Dipper, the handle of the Big Dipper just touches the bottom. But what's significant about this is that I put the circle on the top here. And this circle is our indicator of the date. And so just a simple plate like this, I could show you how the constellations are going to be for any date at any hour. Because if this is January 1 at midnight, that's my starting point, it's going to do a circle once every year because it goes through 360 degrees mm -hmm. in 365 days. Plus it'll do a circle once every day. So here's January 1 at midnight. 
February, March, April, one at midnight, May, June, July, August, September, <laughs> October one, November, December, January one. So similarly, if that's midnight, I divide it by 24 hours, and if I want to see what's going to be like January, well, let's do today's date. Mm -hmm. January 1, so to the end of January, we'll go to, that would be February 1 at midnight, but I'm going to go out at 10 o'clock, so I have to back it off two hours. So if I go out, I'll see the Big Dipper will be to the right of Polaris, mm -hmm. and Cassiopeia will be off to the left there as I'm facing north, and it works every time. So to make one of these things, Get a star field, print it out on your on your um, printer, and this is a 50 degree field of view, mm -hmm. and have Polaris right at the center, and then you get a stack of paper plates. This is so you can make you know a lot of these at once. Get a whole stack of them. <laughs> and put it in, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and put it in a drill press, and so you drill oh, all these yeah. different holes. And this is demonstrated on the um, paper plate astronomy uh, video if you go there or it's online you can watch it in streaming video there and so you just drill all these holes all right and then when you're done here's a simplified one so here you are with your your plate it's got all the holes and then you also have this main hole at the top again this is January 1 at midnight when you print up that star chart now with this I get a bigger 10 inch plate and we've got I don't know if you can see it here we've got a little flap to show the horizon sure. so that this plate slips in there and so you get kind of like that little 3d effect Woo! Right. that just slips right in that little pocket there perfect now for the kids little kids instead of trying to figure out January 1 at mid January February March you know and divide it into 12 and divide it into 24 hours and 12 months and all that we make a simple version we just put a window at the top and it says winter. And what they would have done by now, if I take my Brad out, this one was made by that person, EB. So we just have them on a plate draw winter. You can see there and draw a winter scene. You know, here's fall and there's a the fall leaf. Summer, they've got a something going on in the summer there, whatever that kid saw. And then the plate with the window, when it fits over it, it's much simplified. So in the winter, that's what the stars look like in the winter. That's the spring. Looks like a lot of rain is falling in his picture. Okay. That's great. That's the summer. That's where you'll find the constellations. And this is set for one time, like 9 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's one time specific. And in the fall, that's 9 o'clock at night. Oh, that's fantastic. Now that black plate, was. did you paint that or... No, you can buy black paper plates. Bought a black plate, okay. Yes, yeah, so you can buy black paper plates. And variations on this then, i got two of them here I want to show you in particular. If I divide my plate, and I've got a background plate here that's divided into 24 hours. Let's say I want to take a long-term exposure. I want to do some star trails. So if I set my plate, here my the circles over here. I've set my plate for this particular date and time. If I put a pen inside that star and rotate it through what I've got here, I've got one, two, three, four hours. So I'll rotate it until. You know, let me do this for simplicity. Let me do this for simplicity. Ah, sorry. <laughs> I'll rotate each star until it goes through. I don't have the Brad in there. The five hours, and then I go back to the starting point, and then I put my pen in this circle down here and rotate it through five hours. And then after I've done that for every star, I've marked a streak for every star through five holes. When you remove the plate, you then have got what a star trail. If you were to go and take a photograph, that's pretty much what your photograph is going to look like. Those will be the bright stars, and that's how they'll be clustered around. That's amazing, and that shows you the the rotation of the Earth then, and um, sure, we could get you know you see those lovely pictures that people take with Polaris at the center and all the lovely star trails going around, and this is a again just a great way to model that, and you could get real artistic. I'm sure you could use all kinds of colors 
and different, um, do you try to show sort of the magnitudes of the stars? I don't know, with bigger, obviously I guess if you have bigger holes or use different markers. Different drill bits. Yeah. <laughs> right, so I usually use three drill, bit, three drill bits. One will be for the brighter stars, for example, the Big Dipper. A second one will be fainter stars. Okay. And then the third drill bit is the really big one that goes at the top of the plate so that you know where your January 1 at midnight starting point is. But that, so you've seen we've got a planisphere. And what I showed you is the platosphere. So that's the difference okay. there. Now one last thing. Um, this one is in red so that I don't get it confused with others. You'll notice these stars aren't correct because I've drilled through the plate the other way so that on the back side of this plate we have the, the holes. Uh, are they visible for you there? Yes, I think okay. yep. you should be okay. able to see them. Okay. And the reason we're, I was using this one, for this one, um, David Hurd from Edinburgh University in Pennsylvania came up with this. Uh, with this one, he uses with his um, vision-impaired students. So this is almost like a Braille star oh, chart nice. for him. So again, you drill through this side. It leaves a gentle bump on the other side. And then they can use this to use the Big Dipper to find Polaris. And then you keep going past that to find Cassiopeia. So you can use this for sight um, impaired uh, right, users. Right. Oh, that's, so great. that's why that one's red. Yeah. All right. <laughs> How are we doing? Any questions there? Oh, come on, somebody, come on. Hey, yeah. All right. Um, All right, let's go back to simple yeah, for a minute. Got another one. Okay, here's a simple one. Um, for anybody who still has a phonographic record, if you put a paper plate like where your, you know, well, album would be, and get this thing going on 33 and a third, and use <laughs> markers, and start with the you know red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then when you fold this thing in half, you've made a, you know, a rainbow, and uh, it's a freestanding rainbow. I set it down there. See, so, yeah, it sits, sits yeah. nicely on one's computer there. Maybe not too on well. On your desk or on your shelf. But it's just the presence of this is just a visual reminder of, you know, the red goes on top. And if you got a bigger plate, a much bigger plate, and put it behind it, or start with a smaller one to begin with, like the 33 and a third versus the 78s, get a bigger one and you'd have the colors in the reverse order because on a rainbow, the secondary rainbow up here would be different colors. The inside one would be red and then the big outer one would be blue. If you have a double rainbow, the second one is reversed. Good activity for the year of light, right? Yes, 2015, <laughs> the International Year of Light. To the Year of Light, yes. Uh, Light2015.org, I believe, is the URL for that one. So, You're involved in some of that, too, as well, right? Uh, yes, we just had a... Um, but the first thing I did in January for the Year of Light was a science cafe, and the title of the talk was uh, Two Photons Walk Into a Bar. <laughs> so it went from there. <laughs> Excellent, yeah. So if you've got any punchlines for that, send them my way, if you would, please, <laughs> dear viewers, for Two Photons Walk Into a Bar. It's, um, it's for uh, educational purposes and to celebrate the International Year of Light and uh, lighting technology. Now we're talking about um, rainbows another uh, just a moment ago. So here's a dial to help you find a rainbow. Like where's a rainbow going to be in the sky? Is it just randomly, oh it's raining, I know there's going to be a rainbow out there? Where do you look to find the rainbow? The beauty of rainbows is that they're safe because you begin by putting your back to the sun and then you find <laughs> your shadow to see where your shadow is cast and then you reach out so that you put your the bottom of your fist on the top of your shadow that's way out there in the distance and then stack four fists and the right over the top of it that's where the rainbow will be so this is kind of a, a reminder here of how to find a rainbow four we fists just, huh? yeah it's about 42 degrees actually is what we're looking for so I draw the 42 degree thing, put in four fists, there's my little eyeball at the 
<laughs> you know, eyeball over here, so you know where to put your oh, eyeball. Yep. So you're going to aim this thing so that this line is pointing down at your shadow, the, your head, and then four fists up is up here. Here's where I'm going to look out, out here somewhere to see that rainbow. And what, what it tells you, though, if you're going to be looking down here, down that way to your shadow, is that when your shadow is low, the rainbow is low. If your shadow is really low, that rainbow might be down in the grass. But when the shadow is way out there, that's when you're going to see the, the rainbow highest in the sky. Really cool. And it's also why, you know, in the summertime, you get the sprinkler going, it's high noon, it's really hot, you're running through the sprinkler, and you can, hey, there's a rainbow in the grass. Mm -hmm. That's because that's where the rainbow would be. Even if it's, just, if it's cloudy, you know, if it's raining outside right now, if my shadow is that far down, the rainbow, yes, would be right there in the grass, but usually we don't get to see it. So anyhow, <laughs> how to find a rainbow. Hey, that's another low-tech thing, you know. <laughs> go get this your garden hose, go outside, make a rainbow. This is right. all low-tech, so trust these me. Are, yeah, these, and that's the beauty of all of these. And Plus, they're very, I mean, you are really making the tool that you're going to use. And like you mentioned before, you can find patterns, and I've used some of these, too, um, even online for star clocks and the planispheres, and basically everything is printed for you, and you just have to print it out, and you cut it out and slap it together. But And that's okay, and there's a lot of great information on those, but... This is more artistic. It's much more um, fitting for younger kids, obviously, but even older kids that love to just do a little bit of art. And, and you really make it your own, and you can talk about why you're designing it and putting the things on it the way that you are. And there's just billions of different teachable moments in these. And sometimes the moment doesn't have to be in your face. You can just have something like in the classroom wall. An example might be, which wavelengths are longer, red or blue? I don't remember which. How did it go? I got I need a visual cue. Some people are visual. So what you can do is you can get, who? Oh, whoops, sorry. You can get <laughs> blue Careful. plates. You can get blue plates and red plates. All right, and all you do is you make a sine wave out of them. So you can make a sine wave out of your red plate like that. And you can make a sine wave out of your blue plate. And if you just quietly have them sitting on a wall somewhere, you'll be able to remember that the blue is smaller than the red. So it doesn't have to be in your face, anything. I don't know, somebody come up with something. There's a sine wave. You can make a sine wave real easy with the paper plate. Somebody do something with it. Let me know. Well, sure. And so if people are coming up um, with ideas, they can just email them to you, I assume, right? Are you still you're collecting more, continuing to... I know you said you can't really do much with that older site, but is there yeah, I, where you're I, currently I, collecting all of these things and adding I them? Have, I have received uh, others that people have sent me in the, even in the last year, and so uh, maybe I'll have to put them on my other website, nightwise.org. That's probably what I'll need to do. Thank you for giving me another task. Um, <laughs> I'll... Uh, I'll busy, think I <laughs> everything in here. Well, we've got a couple comments. Actually, I want to say hello to everybody. I see Michael, hello, and Guido made it into the q and I guess that was an adventure sometimes, isn't it? Um, Guido also says, um, it's actually hard to think of good questions for you, Chuck, because your ideas are all so great. So, oh, those are kind words. Kudos to you, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, you know, sometimes everybody does that scale activity. You know, there's always a scale activity. So if we have our sun on a 10-inch plate, you know, how big are the planets going to be? Right, right. Okay, well, it's, this is you know, pretty non-threatening. You color the sun, all right, that's the sun, and to the same scale, you get a bunch of fruits and nuts. Uh, this is April Witt sent this one in, and it just shows you, you know, Jupiter's a big walnut for... Right, hey, hey, that looks like a walnut, yeah. You know, there might be a peppercorn or something, you know, so you just, the problem is you got to buy all these all these spices and nuts that you're never going to use again. But I have them, if I ever do this activity again on a paper plate, i got a whole supply of them in my closet. There you so go. there you go. Planets. Yep. And plates. it's all on one plate. Yes, and that's why this is called, um, in those list of activities, a plate full of planets. Nice. All right. Food is very appropriate for that, too. Now, sometimes um, we look through telescopes in astronomy, 
And uh, you know, I don't, I don't like to go and, and say to people, oh, do you, you know, like especially with small kids, you know, do you see the moon? And they'll, or what do you, you know, do you see the four moons of Jupiter when you're looking at Jupiter? And they'll, uh, yeah, yeah, I see that one. So you got to ask them. So, you know, tell me what you see. Describe what you see. And so when people describe what they see, what I like to have them do is draw what they see. And they draw it on a paper plate. And the nice thing about paper plates is if you get a stack of them, they're really firm. They're not flimsy and flopping all over like you know, a pad of paper or if you don't have a clipboard or something like that. So some people have taken that this to different lengths. So, for example, just something simple. You look through a telescope and draw what you see. And then this is also easy to display if you're going to go and hang up a bunch of paper plates. People can show what they've seen. Yeah, so look, we've got Jupiter there and four moons. Here are, nice. Okay, so here are some sunspots. Yeah. So if this were the whole sun, we had them use the, the, the flat part of the plate as the whole sun. And here's another one. Again, it's not a whole lot of activity you can see. But, you know, that's how the sun can be sometimes. Not a whole lot of activity. Yet I had another observer of the sun who was decidedly more advanced. And this was his observations of sunspots. And he was a regular observer and and so he would be um, doing the official way that you're supposed to be recording them. Hold that still for just there we go just kind of gives it a second to focus okay. in but wow yeah there's a lot more detail and quite a few groups of sunspots there that's beautiful there we go very nice and so you could do a series of those Right, you could just have a whole bunch of. As a matter of fact, you <laughs> could. <laughs> oh, wow. I, didn't, I didn't plan that at all. Wow, look at that! Wow, you, are, you are game on today, Georgia. Oh, I, just, I don't know. I'm thinking like a teacher. I'm thinking, how would I want to decorate my classroom wall with these things? And I'm thinking of a whole, yes, a whole series of these lovely sunspot pictures, no. um, showing you know really the different the, the motions that happen on the sun. If you're decorating. I got plates all over the place here. Forgive me. Ooh. If you're decorating uh, walls, then sure. You know, the other half of we we're talking about doing the scale thing is the distance thing, and so um, we've had people make paper plates of, for example, Jupiter. Yay! <laughs> one of and, our favorites. And this one. Now, what's nice about this one is I can do this. Make it, you know, three dimensional here. Oh, so you've actually cut out around the sort of inner circle of the paper plate. Correct, and this and would be... That kind of lets the planet sort of pop out. And what planet could that be? And ring around it. Saturn, right, right. Saturn. And you liked hanging different things, so, you know, the kids draw, and they can stand at the right distance. Okay, as you're doing your scale thing, and you'd be surprised they're all clumped up around... The Mercury, Venus, Earth people, Mars people, those four are all standing close together. And then when you've got that one child who really you want to burn energy, but participate fully in this, uh, you get a plate, and this is the comet. So here is your nucleus drawn at the center. You've got a coma around the outside, and then you spiral two plates that you've colored yellow and blue, and you have the kid that's got this thing go running out to the Oort cloud, <laughs> just about. <laughs> or have him in. eccentric orbit, and you, you go. Yeah. So give that child the comet one so that they can uh, burn some calories there and uh, demonstrate the um, path of, uh, of a comet. So these are also kind of really... Really bold, colorful. This one also from April Witt. You can see all. That's a beautiful. So just describe a little bit. How, so how would you make that? I know obviously for the you've got the basic paper plate for the comet with the with the nucleus, and then the swirly tail. You're just taking a plate. Just cut out. Looks like around the outer edge. Yeah, and spiraling it. And spiral it. Cut it into a spiral. So you just mm -hmm. cut out. Two paper plates, one painted, one colored blue, and one colored all yellow. Nice color added on there. 
Because you've yeah. got two tails. You've got yeah, the blue awesome. ion tail and the yeah, yellow dust tail. Yeah, you talk about the blue tails. Yeah, perfect. All right, so let's go. Uh, how are we doing so far? We're doing great. Doing great. Um, certainly we've got enough time for at least two or three more activities. And then we can talk a little bit about your um, your website and some of the other things that people can find there. Okay. Uh, let me, up, so, I'll, I'll, yeah, let's I'll ramp up the pace more. here then a little bit. Oh, so sometimes... Yeah. You know, things like <laughs> Orion. This is why I like plates for this one. Orion, okay? Uh, I use this as a template. I put a whole, someone will come up and I'll go and on their paper plate, I just put the dots or they put the dots so that we've got Orion. And we use this for globe at night. But the thing about Orion is sometimes Orion's like that. Sometimes Orion's like that, you know, because it's, you know, it's coming up, it's rising and it's setting. So you can't just give people a rectangular sheet of paper and say this is up. So that's why I like using this. And then once they have a plate, they have their white plate with with a bunch of Orion dots on it, have them come up with whatever constellation they see and draw it in. But then they go out at night and participate in Globe at Night, which is a citizen science project mm, yeah. to measure how much light pollution is in their backyard. And so send that into Globe at night. You can use a template um, with paper plates to get other kids ramped up with their own little Orion plate. And you can write all over it and say, I think I see one here. Looks great. Looks great. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, yeah, I do have one question here for you, Chuck. Um, this is from Chris Kennedy. Hello, Chris. Um, he's asking, have you ever turned a paper plate into a focus mask for a telescope? I don't know. You probably do a little bit of telescope observing. So, oh, I don't know if you. He said it's akin to what I use to focus my eight-inch um, SCT, a bit of cardboard with three holes in it, and some blue tack to hold it to the edge of the scope. But um, I imagine, yeah, some of this might be pretty useful for some good old-fashioned telescope observing. It is, and I have that thing. I thought nobody's going to want to see this dumb plate. It's a plate with just a couple of holes in them and I used it for a mask for when I'm projecting um, an image of a like the transit of Venus or an eclipse or sunspots or something like that and I've got an 8 inch telescope. So if you get a paper plate you can get a 10 inch paper plate that fits just over the top and tape it to the front with a hole in it or you can get a 9 inch paper plate and just kind of wedge it in up against the spider of your telescope. So I do do that. Oh, good. Um, good tips. Okay, so there's other stuff other than paper plates. We have, oh, here's one. I can't Actually, believe you're saying there's things other than paper plates. There's paper cups. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a globe and you don't have an analemma on modern globes anymore, I think it's a shame. So I figured a globe ought to have an analemma, that little figure eight shape on it. Yeah, actually I didn't know. Hmm, they don't do that on globes anymore, huh? Generally speaking, no. No. <laughs> so if you get a cup, okay, just plastic cup. Make our own, yeah. Okay, you're going to put a hole in the bottom of the cup. Just drill a hole right there. On the front end of the cup, I don't know if you can see the crosshairs that I've got with string. Uh... Oops, because that, heck, that one doesn't have it. Oh, that would be best. I know. I was going to say, yeah, sure. Try right. that cup. There we go. Yep. See All the right. crosshairs yes. on the front of it? Yes. Okay. Okay, and on the side, you just cut a viewing window. All right, then take your globe and set it so that your location is right on top, wherever you live. That's right on top. Mm -hmm. Then align it with the north south line. So you're looking. So you're looking right. Down the line of longitude. That's lined up with north south. And then you go out at high noon, and you're going to do this every day for 365 days <laughs> or once a week at high noon. And just go out there and put this cup on your globe and move it around until you will see just, well, I can't really show you what it's going to look like, but you're going to look inside this porthole, and there's going to be that circle of light down there. And you just move the cup until the crosshairs are right on the light and that is the subsolar point at that moment at high noon and if you do that every day I don't know if you can see it this one's kinda old and you can see I've got red red lines going up and down and yellow lines a bunch of them have fallen off 
but it was a narrow figure eight that was on my globe here after I had originally done this. If you go to the website, it's under Analemma Project. Look up Analemma Project. But here's a way to watch all year long as the sun goes down in the winter for the northern hemisphere and then comes back up and then does this little figure eight thing. If right, you right. Always go by. I know a lot of people do some nice um, photography projects. Yes, with, they do. Uh, Analemma, but this is again something you know cool that you know you can do without a lot of high tech equipment, and uh, get yourself an old globe. And there you go. That's amazing that that even works with just a paper cup and a globe. <laughs> and then while we're talking about observing, you know how you always have a little, uh, altitude device that you try to make. Here's the paper plate version. Very simple. Yeah. Notice. The cool thing about hefty foam plates okay, is that so they've got these scallops in them. Okay, those little scallops there? Yeah. And they have 36 scallops. So that means that each one is 10 degrees on your plate. So if you number, this is going to be a little altitude measure. Yeah. So if I number from 0 to 90... Yeah. When I look you this way. Got, so you just cut that plate in half, right? So there's. Well, kind of. Here's the halfway mark. But mm -hmm. what I did is at the top here, I bent this piece back and this piece forward. So from your perspective, you are the observer. Mm -hmm. I got to tilt this so the camera is right. Oops, I got to use the camera here. Sorry. It's kind of like a uh, a gun sight here. So that you know when you're looking at your object, I gotta get it off to the side here. This is kind of tricky using a camera in <laughs> reverse. That's so okay. You, I think we're, so that just we, helps you. There we go. So then you go until your gun sight. Yeah, line it up. Is lined up perfect, and then you read where your thing is hanging, and that tells you the altitude of that object that you were just looking at. Very nice. Using Practice. the scallops on that styrofoam plate is a great idea. So you can use the scallops on a paper plate to show a lot more technical stuff now. So uh, you tell me how much time we have, but here what we're showing is on the, on the background plate, I'm going to take this off, we have the um, celestial equator, the, or, I'm sorry, the regular, the real equator, and the North Pole and the South Pole. I'll hold that still for just a moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And then, and then okay. you draw, you know, 23 and a half degrees north and 23 and a half degrees south. And on the website, will also tell you how high north and south to put the sun through the months. Meanwhile, on another plate, a foam one, conveniently, since it's got mm -hmm. increments of 10 degrees. Here's going to be that plate there. And then we just overlay the two of them. For this one, I am going to put the brad through here just because it'll make it a little easier for me to maneuver this. At least I thought so it was. So much good um, math in all of these activities is what I'm thinking right now. A lot of opportunities for working, working that in, degrees and geometry. I had heard that um, flashcards that are made on circles, uh, people fare better with because the theory was that the circle you've only got, it's a circle, it's just this uniformity of the circle and with the square you've already got an, a whole new shape of order imposed and so flashcards on circles, you're going right to the numbers quicker than if you are if it's on rectangles or squares, but that was somebody's, somebody's research, I, I don't know if it's true or not. Okay, so anyhow, we know that the North Star is at our elevation, so if I'm at say 40 degrees of latitude on this one, I've preset it for 40 degrees of latitude. How much, how's the lighting for you there? Am I? That is, oh, I can see. Yep. So if that's at 40 degrees of latitude, yeah, yeah. here, then this will show you going out the celestial equator. Will show me how high the sun is at the equinoxes. Plus, it'll show you how high it gets at the summer solstice and at the December solstice down here. And as my latitude changes, as I head south, for example, I'll move Polaris so that it's at a lower elevation. As I go south, you notice how the sun gets higher and higher. 
as I'm at the equator, the sun is going from here to here through the seasons, and if I go yep. to the North Pole, you'll see there's six months when the sun's below the horizon here. <laughs> it doesn't even get above the horizon until you get up to whatever that is, you know, 70, 60 some degrees right there. It's amazing. It's amazing. So here's how you can use a foam plate for those 10 degree increments. That's great. And people can just, you can play around with these. So like you say, you may live in, you know, one part of the, the world, but you can kind of see for yourself in a way what, you know, what, do, what does the sky look like, you know, at the North Pole? What's the sun doing up there? Um, and then have a lot of good conversations about, about that. And uh, really just a, amazing things you can do with these simple activities. If you want to get into... Give us one more, can you? <laughs> and then we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about a few other things before we wrap up here. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Can you choose just one more out of your... I'm going to go to a, just a different subject, though, is that if you're into oh, art, and this isn't yeah. something that I did. This is from uh, Bradford Hanson Smith out of Chicago. So he would take paper plates and he would fold them. He doesn't believe in cutting a paper plate. That's almost sacrilege. So he will <laughs> fold them... And he has, here's, he got these two books, but the one is Whole Movement. I'm going to see. Okay. Gonna show you. Yeah. Look at L E Whole Movement. Okay. That's, for example, is the cover of. Oh, beautiful. Those are all plates. Paper plate and, sculpture. Yeah, and you would be amazed. So his book shows you how to do all this stuff. It is just phenomenal, some of the artwork he has created out of paper plates. Mm -hmm. So. Now, is that link on uh, one of your websites somewhere? or? It should be on the Paper Plate website, yes. Okay, great. All right, I'm just going to refer people there. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. So what you want to do, though, I recommend you go to the website, find something yeah, absolutely, like, and adapt it. Sure, there's videos there. There's, I assume, the instructions um, for doing these, right? Yes, uh, and then on the stream and video, it, it really kind of gets a little tedious, but it walks you through it, and you might be more comfortable that way. Yeah, give it a try, see what you like, and, and uh, enjoy serving the universe on a paper plate. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I could just see, you could just have a whole astronomy-themed picnic this summer when you're going, going out there and doing. These are all things, of course, you can do, you know, no matter what the weather is, no matter what kind of, you know, lighting you've got. It doesn't matter. These are all good things to do. Um, so, what kind of feedback do you get um, from, have you used these with just all aged kids or do you tend to, I don't know what kind of outreach or, you know, activities you're usually involved in, do you find yourself, you know, all ages or more younger, more older? No, it gets to be all ages depending on, yeah. on what you want to do. So, um, for example, at Astro Camp, uh, yeah. it's a... It's a an astronomy camp for kids ages 9 to 13 in Three Rivers, Michigan. It's through YMCA Camp Eberhardt. And uh, the website for that, I'm the director of AstroCamp. It's astrocamp.us. So it looks like Astro Campus. Um, and, you know, some of those kids, they're, you know, at a higher, some of the kids are just beginners. You know, they're out to have fun, go out and use telescopes, and others at a higher level. So uh, back to the idea of that moon dial being real technical, Instead, we could have them, you know, make their own moon dial that, you know, could be as technical as this one. You know, you're going to start out with just something simple, you know, that God's eye view of how the planets <laughs> are going around. But then you can kind of keep building up, and that's the whole thing, you know, just kind of build up a little bit more mm -hmm. if they can handle it, if they're old enough to be able to transfer the idea of what they see from the God's eye view looking down on this whole system. You know, you, you first, you start off with that inner circle the basics, there. Right, new new first full, last quarter. And then you put your local, you put your local horizon on there, and I've got the images of what it would look like from Earth to go with it. So it all depends on the different audience, how far you want to go with it. Mm -hmm. How elaborate it is. I mean, you could you could go back to the turntable and make a drinking game out of this if you wanted to with adults. <laughs> we'll talk so off air let's, if anybody wants to get hold of it. <laughs> That'll be another show. <laughs> On a yeah, so actually, and all this goes back to things called volvels. 
So these are paper dials that were inside 17th and 16th century um, science books, for example. Yeah, so there's actually yeah, a little bit of history behind some of this, right? Yes, yeah. yes. We didn't, we didn't invent this wheel. <laughs> <laughs> we're just making it better. Just improving on it. Yep, so, and that, I believe, is on the website, too, right? Some of the history. Yes, of, if, you look, of if you look up the background. Models yes. and things. Yeah. And if you want to be, you know, if you're instructing at the front of the class, get some cake trays, and you can that do the same thing. A huge paper plate. Right. So that like that. Cake tray. This is a cake tray. Wow. Oh. Well, they call it cake. They call it cake trays in the industry, but you'll think of them as a pizza tray. Pizza but it works pizza, the, right? Works the same way. So then I can just make a large version of of what I was showing you momentarily ago. Oh, great! So good for teachers. Little demo. Yeah. Beautiful. Huge. All right, well, unfortunately, we didn't get to, we didn't yeah, get well, to you know what? I know. How many of these do you have? Have you counted these up? Because you've got a table full of paper plates back there. There are about 80 on the website. Some of the ideas have been developed. Some haven't been put on the website. So, yeah, we're approaching, as we'd like to say, there's 88 of them to kind of coincide with numbers on a keyboard and constellations in the night sky. So. <laughs> the magic number. Yeah. So, But you will take uh, suggestions, modifications, Absolutely. Uh, ideas. Okay. You want to tell us where um, to contact you best and then maybe a little bit about your own website and other things that you do. Uh, I just rebuilt my website after it had been grossly hacked. Um, I'm at nightwise.org, nightwise.org, and there you can see a bunch of projects that I have um, have done in the past. I was intimately involved in the transit of Venus. Um, well, with Comet Ison, did a Comet Festival in our community here oh. to celebrate the uncertainty of science. And it, it was a dud. <laughs> the comet that was. The comet was a dud. But uh, we got the whole community on board. Um, there's a Let There Be Night project there for, you know, I, I try to do things like the last talk I did, we were doing graphs, trying to show the different colors of graphs using colored balloons. And we made a huge 3D model of um, our community's light pollution out of 35,000 Lego blocks. Uh, if you look up the Let There Be Night uh, project on, on that nightwise.org website. Okay. And uh, the next thing is going to be that 2017 solar eclipse. Yes. Yay. And my involvement there is going to be trying to get a sun funnel out to the community. It's, it's free. The instructions are there on how to make one. But if you want a group of people to look around your telescope, look at the eclipse at a telescope, instead of just one eye at a time being able to enjoy the spectacle, if you've got a crowd, and you want to have them concurrently view this thing, it's a safer way to project an image. It's a rear screen projection. So look up Sun Funnel. Sun and there will be, there'll be instructions on how to make your own there. Fantastic. How close um, to the central path of the eclipse are you? I, you've got to be pretty close. Um, uh, not where I am now, but I will be on August 21, 2017. <laughs> I'm going definitely to um, be on that line. Yeah, you have head south a little bit, huh? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know we're um, we're already thinking of some things we want to do here in Edwardsville because we're we're pretty close too. Certainly um, closer than for any recent eclipses. So yeah, that's very exciting, and we can't wait to do that. And um, if any of our got some great paper plate activities you can do as part of your eclipse party. Yes, thanks for the idea. I got to come up with some more. Oh, we got some cool eclipse <laughs> ones actually. I got a really cool eclipse one for lunar eclipses in particular. Okay. So if you're going to have a lunar eclipse, go look up the lunar eclipse one. It's dynamite if you if you use two car headlights. Um, so that's where you're going to be. You're going to be outside. You got one car. You're going to turn the headlights on. It really is cool how it shows you umbra and penumbra by having two headlights. Oh wow, amazing! Um, and <laughs> one more thing is, if any of our listeners right now who are amateur astronomers and educators are interested in joining us for a week at AstroCamp, uh, this camp for kids, uh, go to astrocamp.us, see if you think you might be a good fit or if it's a good fit for you, and get a hold of me. And uh, we have guest um, AstroCamp counselors there, so you're welcome to uh, talk to me about how we might be able to get you on board for a guest counselor if you want to spend some time at camp. 
Oh, I was good. I was good. When do you have that? Um, is that uh, this year it's going to be. Yeah, it's usually the middle of July. Middle. So right when there's no little to no moon. So July 12 to 18, I think this year is when okay. Astro Camp will be. All right. Okay. Good. Well, gosh, Chuck, thank you so much. This has been a whole lot of fun. It's one of the many things that makes me wish I was still teaching actively in the classroom because I would I would just go and buy a whole slew of paper plates and do all kinds of good things. So, so, do, um, it. so I, do it. I will do that anyway. I know. <laughs> so call your library up. Folks, anybody that's out there, libraries love stuff like this. Call them up and say, hey, you know what, I, I'll do a program for you if you want mm -hmm. for your community program. And get back out there in circulation. Come on, Georgia, you can do this. <laughs> oh, I do. I do. I don't have as much time as I used to, but I was just, I was going to say, we have a nice children's museum here in Edwardsville. I was just there over the weekend with Nicole, and we had uh, some Girl Scouts doing some fun science, and, and this is the perfect kind of thing that would be so just user-friendly for Scouts, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, um, clubs, after school, all that kind of stuff great kid activity. So, yeah, so I appreciate it so much for you coming on and sharing all of these things. And so there's a lot more uh, than you shared with us, I know, at the two websites that you shared. Um, and your nightwise.org is more, so there's the paper plate one, but this nightwise.org is more of your own personal Correct. other activities that you do, yes. astronomy related. Yes. So, yes. so check that out as well. So, um, any last things to share with us about paper plate astronomy? No, I just, I just want, to, I want to thank all the people who have made contributions to the collection. These are not all my ideas, um, and uh, it's, it's, it's a tool. You know, it's not the end all, be all for teaching science. It's just a tool. But have some fun with it. Send, you know, come up with your own ideas. Adapt from what we have. This isn't all perfected here, um, and have fun with it. Keep looking up. Sounds great. Sounds great. All right. Thanks very much. And thanks to everybody for joining in. It's always good to see everybody in the Q&A and uh, comments and things. So we appreciate your questions and comments, and thanks for watching. Uh, we'll be back, uh, be back with Nicole next week. Um, so stay tuned for some more information about that. I'm not quite sure um, about the topic yet, but we'll have something good. And um, stay tuned to CosmoQuest for all the other Hangouts that we have over the week. Nicole's always really good at just spewing out all of the things, and I'm uh, not quite that good at it. So I will just say follow us on Twitter and on the web, and we'll keep you in touch with everything that's going on here at CosmoQuest. So we'll see you throughout the week, and then again next Wednesday here on Learning Space. So again, thank Chuck, you. thank you. Yeah. And thank you, uh, viewers. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Appreciate you so much. So, All right. Have a good week, everybody. And thanks, Chuck. Bye-bye. Bye now.